Hi there. It's John Anthony Francis Wilcox, and today is Saturday, the 11th of February, 2023. So, uh, lots of talk about uh, some good things and stuff, but uh, a very serious issue I need to talk about this time that occurred to me this week. Um, I preface this by saying one thing I don't talk about much is I'm going to use the word circumstantially. Uh, I am circumstantially claustrophobic. Now, I, I mean, I, I know people that can't go in elevators or that. I'm not like that. But really enclosed things really bother me. And I'm not someone that, you know, frightens easily or anything like that. There's stuff where I get squeamish, like I don't want to see a needle go in an eyeball or something like that. But that's different. So, late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, I guess we'll say, I had a fear in me unlike I've had my entire 62 and a half years. I had about a 30 second, what they call a night terror. And what it was, was I was like laying down, but at an angle, like slightly raised, you know, like inclined up a little bit and I was paralyzed in the dream I couldn't move at all and there was a board I don't know how to put it uh, a board covered with different colored dots on little rubber thingies and it was about that close to my face you know like a half an inch to an inch from my face and I couldn't turn my face anyway where it was out of that field of vision and I couldn't move and it may not have even been 30 seconds but it terrified me I felt this huge wave of horror of fear like I've never felt in my life and I woke up and I couldn't let it go for like three hours it just stayed there um, it was very difficult and and I just never felt as horrified and as helpless as that and um, it was it was terrifying I thought gee I hope I never have that again well wouldn't you know early this morning at about a little before nine I was having some kind of a dream and I remember distinctly it was almost like I was in the opposite position. I was laying in something sort of stomach down and I was, my head was in a, a space, a long space that had about that much clearance over my head and about that much under it. And so I could, and I couldn't move again. And I could move my hand a little bit, sort of try to move forward, but there was no way out of it. And I woke up and I wonder if I had that dream because I've been thinking about the other dream. It hasn't fully left me. And I wonder if some of it, because I've been trying to look up causes and things like that. Um, another thing I don't talk about is for years I have dealt with sleep apnea, evidently reasonably bad. But uh, usually I'm okay, you know, and I checked my, my blood oxygen levels and everything and they were, they were fine, you know, they were in the high 90s. And uh, it really shook me. And uh, on what was already a difficult week. So it's been a difficult week for me emotionally and that didn't help. So... Uh, I hope that those two instances are it, you know, very, not good, not good. So outside of that, um, I saw Grace Mary on Thursday, brought me my communion. It's always lovely to see her. She's a great friend. Um, today, speaking of uh, religion, uh, she also brought me the latest issue of Magnificat, which has all of the masses and readings for every day of the month and um, 
for this month. And also today for any fellow Catholics that see this, today is the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes, who you may or may not know that's who St. Bernadette saw, Bernadette Subaru. So beyond that, I know I cooked stuff. I really don't have a memory of it, you know. And uh, I've been doing some art. And I put up a couple of interviews. One, it was interesting because one, it really made me unhappy at how professional, unprofessional the person that responded to it was. You know, these were by email. And one was brilliant. And they gave me long thoughtful detailed answers which is which shows respect for the publication but more importantly respect for the people reading it and the other one who was with a, a member of a big band uh, just I don't even know that I could call it an interview but just on a simple thing like at the end uh, name me six albums you never get tired of listening to they only listed five you can't tell me that a musician only likes five albums. That's kind of ridiculous. So on top of that, I found out, obviously, that um, someone who I knew, Phil Spaulding, bass player, extraordinary. I knew him first you know, from working with my sister from another mister, Toya Ann Wilcox. But he also played with Mike Oldfield, with the band GTR, with the artist Seal. Um, and I met him once back in the GTR days. Just such a nice guy and an incredible player. So he died at the young age of 65. Very sad to see him go. And of course this week we also lost Burt Bacharach, which is, which is very sad. But um, so the whole, you know, uh, Night Terrors thing really kind of, you know, dominated my whole week. So, I'm hoping that next week I got a, a much happier one for you. But, uh, this is me. You get me on any given day, you know. I love you all. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.